Hey guys, it's Aman and Christina from, from Our Risk, Risk Journey. Journey. Today's video is going to change some lives and I'm just going to be bold and say that up front because we are talking about how you can go to college for free or super reduced. Now we know that college is a big expense for a lot of people and many of us still have student loans to this day. Well, this video, we are going to share with you guys some very unique ways that you can go to college for free. So we're taking a unique approach with this video because we're not talking about the standard ways that you can get college paid for. Things like AP classes, community college, or standard scholarships. These are things that you've likely never heard about before. We're going to go into different ways that you can get your college paid for completely free or drastically reduced. Let's start with this list. Let's, let's jump into it. So the first one is applying for Ivy League schools. There are certain Ivy League schools that pay 100% tuition and room and board if your family makes under a certain amount. So Stanford offers free tuition for all students that have families making less than $125,000 a year. Whoa, $125,000 a year. You can go to Stanford for free if your family makes less than $125,000. Whose family makes more than 125? More people make less than $125,000 a year. So I think this is the niche. If your family makes less than that, and many families do, you can go to Stanford for free. You should not be deterred from applying to a school like Stanford and like many of these other Ivy League schools that we're talking about because their tuition appears to be high because their threshold for what is low income is also really high. So Stanford by far is not the only school that offers this. There are several other schools. Now, we know many people that will go into debt to send their children to an Ivy League school, and they are making less than $125,000 a year. So if you are in one of those situations, you don't have to put yourself into debt to send your child to an Ivy League school. You can, they can go for free. And the number two one, we just talked about the Ivy League schools, but there are universities that give free tuition. These are the tuition free schools. Now the difference between how these schools offer free tuition versus the Ivy League schools is these schools don't even offer a tuition fee. It's completely free for the student. Oh, you just walk in the door and everything is free. <laughs> you say, I'll take that and that, how much is that? Oh, that's free. I'm going there. So we did some research and we found three schools that offer tuition absolutely free. And the first one is the College of the Ozarks. It's a liberal arts school in Missouri founded in 1906. And to get the tuition at the school, students are required to work 15 hours per week and two 40 hour work weeks during the academic year. The next school is Brea College, founded in 1855. It's 35 miles south of Lexington, Kentucky. Every student works 10 to 15 hours per week while carrying a full academic load. And the last school we research is Macaulay Honors College at City University of New York. What's great about this school is that you get the free tuition, a laptop computer, and a cultural passport, which gives students access to cultural institutions throughout New York City for free. Now there is one reoccurring theme with these free tuition schools. You have to do a little bit of work, either 15 hours a week or you have to put together a 40 hour work week at some period during the year. Now that is the catch, but would you rather work at the school putting in those hours or would you rather do some back breaking labor somewhere else? I mean, I think it is a fair trade off for free tuition. And the third way to get free tuition is with the Golf Caddy Scholarship. And we're highlighting this because this is one of those niche scholarships that no one is thinking about. It is not on the radar, but the payoffs for applying for this and getting accepted into this scholarship program are tremendous. Free room and board, free tuition, everything completely paid for. And in exchange, you are a caddy. So this is a scholarship that offers four years of full tuition and housing for students that have been caddies in high school and that continue to remain caddies in college. So last academic year, 810 students applied for this scholarship and 280 received the scholarship. That is a tremendous acceptance rate. It's over 25% of the people that apply get the scholarship. But that doesn't seem like a lot of people applying to this scholarship. I'm sure there are more high school kids out there being caddies, making a little bit of money on the side that haven't even considered applying to a scholarship like this. 
So let's go into the details of the requirements for this scholarship. So applicants must have caddied successfully and regularly for a minimum of two years before applying, and they're also expected to caddy during the summer when they apply for the scholarship. Applicants must have completed their junior year of high school with above a B average in college prep classes, and they're also required to take the ACT and or the SAT. So the Caddy Scholarship is one of those niche scholarships. These scholarships that no one is thinking about, that is completely under the radar, these are the ones that you should be going after. So number four is taking a CLEP exam. A CLEP exam, if you pass it, that means you don't have to take the college course equivalent once you get in college, and that reduces your tuition bill. So there are 33 CLEP exams that you can take that cover intro level college course material. With a passing score on one CLEP exam, you could earn three or more college credits at more than 2,900 US colleges and universities. So CLEP exams cost $87 to take, but there is a nonprofit organization called Modern States that will pay for you to take the class. So it offers free courses for students to prepare for the CLEP exam, and it pays the $87 test fee for students to take the test. Now the catch with CLEP is that it is not accepted at all universities, but it is growing in popularity and more and more universities are starting to accept it. In fact, 2,900 universities are already accepting CLEP. Number five is a tuition reciprocity agreement. These are agreements between different states and colleges and universities where a student can attend school out of state and pay an in-state tuition price. So these tuition reciprocity programs are administered by different regional organizations. We're not gonna get into all of the details and identify all of the regional organizations, but it works kind of like this. Let's say you're interested in studying a degree that is not offered in your state but it's offered in the state next to yours or within your region. You can apply to that program out of state and not have to pay the out of state fees for that state. And number six, and we had never heard about this before, is called the income share agreement. With an income sharing agreement, a student receives funds to pay for college and in return agrees to pay back a percentage of future income for a fixed period of time. Rather than paying tuition up front, students pay back a portion of their income after graduating and landing a job. And if a student doesn't land a job, they pay back nothing. So the terms of an income sharing agreement vary, but they typically cap out at 10 or 15% of your income. And if you get an income sharing agreement through a school, they typically also cap out the total amount that you have to pay back. Now the income sharing agreements can either come directly from the school or through a private organization. You should do your own research, but what, from what we've heard, the school programs are a lot better than the private programs. And number seven, and this one is near and dear to me, but is having your employer pay for your college education. Now this is something that you should strategically take a look at. Because when I was looking at employers, I identified those that had tuition reimbursement or that would pay for your grad school because I wanted to go to grad school. So this is something that you should take very seriously if you are thinking about getting higher level education. So Aman got his grad school paid for, but there's other employers that we identified that actually pay for undergrad tuition as well. So we identified UPS, Intel, AT&T, Procter & Gamble, Starbucks, and Walmart. All of these employers have some form of tuition assistance program, and a lot of them are available to full-time and also part-time employees. And the final way is to become a resident advisor. Now, if you know our story, you know that I went to UCLA Law, and when I was there, Aman and I were both resident advisors. We got to live for free in UCLA housing, and we also got a monthly stipend. Now this was a huge savings for us because we were in West Los Angeles. And if you know anything about the prices in West Los Angeles, you know that rent can easily cost you three or $4,000. So for us to be able to live there rent free and in addition get a stipend, this was a huge hack. It was a huge savings. So that's it. Those are our ways to get college completely paid for or significantly reduced. Now, if you're not going to college, that's fine. Maybe your kids are going to college or maybe you know someone else that's going to college. Share this video with them because I'm sure some of these tips are applicable to their situation. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and join, join the, the journey. journey.